This is The Locker Room on News 3. Well, entering tonight, just four weeks remaining in the regular season, and when we start digging out the Jackets to head to high school football games, usually means the playoffs are not that far away. Thanks so much for joining us tonight here on The Locker Room, and we're going to start in Suffolk with a battle of unbeatens who have been at the top of their respective classes statewide. Oscar Smith, two-time reigning state champ in Class 6. Kings Fork rolling to the Class 4 state semis in 2021. Tonight, they square off, and the home of the Bulldogs is where we find News 3, Zach Staten. And Zach, pretty close for some of it tonight, but after that, one of the teams just steps on the gas. Yeah, definitely kind of the theme of the tonight, Mark. But this, uh, the scenario is very simple. Oscar Smith trying to continue an unbeaten streak that extends to last September. Kings Fork at 6-0, trying to continue the best start it's had in program history. As the old cliche goes, something's got to give. A chance to continue dominance. Or end a streak. A passion play of pride for two local communities. It's the battle of the unbeatens. Been saying it all year long. What do we got to do? Take our what? Take your respect, fellas. I believe. If y'all believe, we're going to dominate this team. So whose dream of a perfect season stays alive tonight in Suffolk? Oscar Smith gets a masterful start. When Trey Jones grabs the opening kickoff, he's got reservations for 690 yards to the house. Tigers had two special teams touchdowns before the offense took the field to make it 14-0. Bulldogs respond right back. They close it to 14-7, then sophomore Javon Ford. There's a reason FBS Power 5 teams are giving him calls. Puts his head down, turns on the Jets, and races 44 yards to the house. 17-14 after an Oscar Smith field goal. After an interception, Anthony Joffreon's group completes the comeback when Cameron Butler hits Aiden Lewis for the 16-yard score. The home team leads 21-17, but barely a minute later, Tigers punch back. Cade Cox on the low snap. He finds Xavier Lewis, who lays the lumber and won't be stopped for the touchdown. Visitors own a 31-21 lead going into the break, despite being outgained by nearly 200 yards in the first half. And the dam broke in the second half. Oscar Smith capitalizing on four Kings Fork interceptions. Isaiah Aker takes the third one and turns it into points on the offensive side on the pitch and catch from Cox. Oscar Smith shuts out Kings Fork in the second half to improve to 6-0 with a 52-21 win. A lot of people have been doubting us, saying, like, we're not the same. We better this year, and we got to show people that. We've proven that every game, step by step. And that motivates me all the time. motivates the team all the time. We can't wait to prove people wrong. This just does nothing but make us better. It's a team effort. Our guys finally came around on offense and got going in the second half, and I think that it's just the confidence, and, and they got rolling. Oscar Smith now takes a 6-0 record into next week. Back at home against Nanceman River. Meanwhile, Kings Fork trying to bounce back from its first loss of the season against Hickory. We'll be back with much more here at Kings Fork High School. Zach Staten, News 3 Sports. Stepping on the gas are the Tigers. Thanks so much, Zach. We'll check back with you in a second. Well, meanwhile, Lake Taylor bouncing back strong from its lone loss of the season to Maury. The Titans entering the night looking for their third straight win, but facing a hungry Churchland team. Homecoming at Lake Taylor. The court celebrating during halftime, but let's rewind to the second quarter quarter. Final seconds of the half, Jameer Freeman going up top. Great catch in traffic by Elijah Washington. 21-19 Titans at the break. To the fourth now, same score. Churchland trying to take the lead back on the field goal, but it's blocked. Lake Taylor holds. That leads to this. Freeman on the keeper. He'll elude a few tackles and scamper to Pater, crossing the plane before the ball coming loose. 27-19 Titans extend the lead. And then slamming the door, it's Terrion Washington Jacobs finding the end zone. Lake Taylor picks up the win. 34-19 the final. Well, still to come, some Chesapeake City foes go head-to-head. -head. We'll head back out to Zach and see who picks up some key late-season wins. That's coming up after this. Welcome back to the locker room, everybody. Live here at Kings, High, Kings Fork High School. Zach Staten, Mark Davis back in studio. Western Branch continuing to have a nice start to this 2022 season. The lone loss for the Bruins 
happened in this stadium to Kings Fork 14-7, trying to get a third straight win since that loss to the Bulldogs. They take on Hickory tonight. It is all Western Branch in the second quarter, up 42-3. On the kickoff return, it's taken by Hickory wide receiver Nick Dubek. Sets them up in nice field position, but they can't do anything with it. And the Bruins take advantage on the next drive just before the end of the half. Look at this deep pass just launched to Paul Billet for the touchdown. Western Branch up 49-3. It's why they won them down in Chapel Hill. The UNC commit. Western Branch rolls in this one. 56-3 is your final. It's homecoming over at Deep Creek High School. They take on Nanceman River. Deep Creek running back trying to get it going here. Sam Diggs on the inside run. He'll get enough to move the sticks and get the first down. Then a couple of plays later, it's another running play, this time for Brandon Nesbitt. He cuts inside and gets another first down as well, but they can't take advantage of either of those runs. And Nanceman River gets back into it with wide receiver Melvin Brow getting the quick pass and scoring the first touchdown of the game in the first quarter. Nanceman River goes up 7-0. They go on to spoil the homecoming, 28-14. Again, we're live here at Kings Fork High School. I'm Zach Staten. News 3 Sports. All right, Zach, thanks very much. Well, moving on now to Portsmouth. Maury has been rolling as usual since an opening loss to New Bern out of North Carolina. The Commodores winning four straight, all by at least three touchdowns. Tonight, traveling across the river to take on Manor, and the Commodores waste no time getting started. LeBron Bond on the opening kickoff. I don't think he gets touched at all here. Breaks free, and he's gone. That's a house call. 7-0, Maury jumps out. Next possession, Peyton Jones. Showing off the skills that are getting him to Duke, changing direction and takes it deep into Mustang territory would lead to a touchdown. Still in the first, and Jones able to finish the job himself this time. This puts Maury on top 20 to nothing at the end of the first quarter. Commodores grab their fifth straight, winning big at Manor. To the beach now, Kempsville has been on a roll, taking on Salem tonight. Tied in seven in the fourth, Zachary Rogers. The big run here for the Devils. This sets up a field goal to put them up 10 to 7. So the Chiefs looking to answer. Chris Spence in at quarterback now. He'll fire it to Nate Clark for the nice gain here. Chiefs are on the move. That would help set up this. Justin Joyner gets to the far side, scampers in from five yards out. Kemsville takes the 14-0 lead, 14-10 lead. 47 seconds to play, and the Chiefs crowd's going crazy. So one last chance for the Sun Devils. They'll go deep. But the defense standing tall. Chiefs go to 7-1. They hold off Salem 14-10. Staying in the beach, battle the birds. Alan Fanica and his Falcons of Cox High School. They're 5-1 hosting Landstown. 30 seconds left in the third quarter. Eagle 27-yard line. Gage Treffery pumps, fires deep to Dominique Tebow. 24 yards, student section rocking after that play. Same drive starting the fourth quarter. Jordan Cooper caps it from the three-yard line here. That's a touchdown. Cox moves to 6-1. and one. Well, Lansdowne drops to 3-4 and four on the season. 24-7, your final score. Well, coming up, plenty more action in the beach tonight. Could green runs stay unbeaten and avoid the upset? We're coming back right after this. All right, big thanks to the Manor Band there. Green Run with the pink out to raise cancer awareness tonight, hosting Ocean Lake. Stallions score touchdowns on three straight scrimmage plays. Here they are. Damari Palmer gets in from nine yards out, 14 0. Then check out the 46 yard bomb from Kevin White Jr. to, to Sean Young Steve. Green Run runs the count up to 21 0. Finally, White finding Die Sean Newby. He'll make the catch and do the rest. 58 yards to the house when all is said and done. Stallions stay perfect on the season with the big victory. The Kellum Knights bringing out the bagpipes to host Bayside. Marlins answering the call for battle on their first offensive series. Leon Griffin III scooting into the end zone from 13 yards out. Bayside takes the 7-0 lead two minutes into the game. Second quarter now, the Knights trying to mount a drive inside their own 15-yard line, but the Marlins defensive front swaddling up Harrison Stanley for a five-yard loss. That was on third down. Bayside blindsides Kellum. 35-0, leaving the home crowd scratching their heads. We're coming back right after this. Let's take a quick run through some other scores here. Joe Jones picking up his first win at Grassfield. Grizzlies top Great Bridge 21-0. Elsewhere, Tallwood winning its second straight tonight. Congratulations, Lions. 
Indian River shuts out Lakeland while Norview holds off crosstown rival Granby. Comets put some points on the board though. Woodside bouncing back with a shutout win over Bethel while Norcom topping district foe Booker T. Washington. So a lot of big wins picked up tonight. Only three weeks remain in the regular season. We will see how everybody does next week as the playoffs close in that second weekend in November. So that's going to wrap up tonight's edition of the locker room. We'll have more scores and highlights on the sports page of WTKR.com. For Zach Staten, I'm Mark Davis. Have a great night and a great weekend, everybody.